we're halfway through 2021. And for me, that means it's time for me to take inventory of a number of areas of my life. This can be helpful to see where I'm on track or where I might need some tweaks or things can be ramped up or even let go entirely. So this month, I'd love for you all to join me and even consider areas where you might want to do a quick check so that you can move through the next six months or so. Today, we'll be taking a look at my debt. <laughs> As a licensed psychologist, I've amassed six figures of student loans and other debts, and I'm on a mission to eliminate them as quickly as possible. So if you're interested, just keep watching. Hi there, my name is Dr. Erica, and on this channel, we encourage radical change to inspire far-reaching impact. Today, we're talking about debt. And while I've done a budget video before, I've never really talked about the expenses that go directly and entirely to debt or even how all this debt came about. So I wanted to share a bit about my journey for those who might be interested in mental health and going on to get their doctorate and considering this path or who might have a similar amount of debt that they'd like to tackle together. Now, let me insert this little disclaimer. I am not a financial advisor obviously, nor does this video serve to provide any real financial advice for you watching. I'm simply sharing how I plan to tackle six figures worth of debt that I have amassed over the past 10 years or so, and I'm inviting you along for the ride. That's all. All right, now I began my journey towards becoming a psychologist by starting college in 2004. And I was fortunate enough to receive an academic scholarship to Howard University that covered classes and fees. Um, now my parents had saved some money for college and for the first two years, they were able to cover things like room, board, and books. So I had very few out of pocket costs. They were even able to cover things like my trip home for Thanksgiving or Christmas and little expenses like that. Now, while in undergrad, I also had a part-time job. And while I established credit with two credit cards and American Express and Discover, I only used them to buy things like flights home or emergencies and was able to pay them off immediately. Then in my junior year, my parents let me know that there was very little extra money um, and that while there may be enough to at least take me to the end of my senior year, there definitely wouldn't be any to get me to or through uh, my lofty grad school plans uh, and that I'd essentially be on my own, which was fine. Uh, so at that point, I decided to take out a $5,000 loan at the end of my undergraduate education to cover things like applying to grad school. Little did I know this would have to cover things like applications, flights, hotels, car rentals, all of the things that come with traveling around the country trying to determine where I was gonna go to grad school. Um, things that I did not realize and that had I realized uh, would be related to going to grad school, I may have changed my approach in terms of the schools that I targeted just slightly. And because I had no idea what that cost was going to be like, I also then started to charge things on my credit cards. And for the first time, I wasn't in a position to pay them off entirely. And so they started to grow and accrue interest as well. And then once I was accepted to grad school and uh, paid all the expenses that come along with moving uh, across the country, once I got there, I then was hit with all of the costs that might be associated with pursuing a practitioner-based degree versus a research-based degree. So my degree is a PsyD, a Doctorate of Psychology, versus a PhD, a Doctorate of Philosophy, and it's considered a practitioner degree like a medical degree or a law degree. Therefore, oftentimes things like TAing uh, is not covered or even your attendance at the school is not covered because the school isn't really research-based or research, research heavy, and neither is the degree. Uh, now, let me say that I, even with having the information that I know now and all of the debt that I have, uh, now, I don't think I would have made a very a different choice. I am very happy with the education that I received. Uh, it's still the best training decision that I ever could have made. 
And now what I would have done is maybe searched a little harder for money uh, and thought more about my approach to this particular degree in school and what I might need to do to lessen the amount of debt that I would have to, or lessen the amount of money that I would have to take out. Now about each semester of grad school required that I take out around $30,000 for tuition, books and living expenses uh, while in the semester. And after that first semester, my first thought was like, wait a minute, <laughs> you have a total of 10 of these and at 30K a pop, that's gonna be ridiculous. Um, and so I applied for several jobs and fellowships to help supplement the expenses that I knew that I was going to have over the course of the next five years, which actually ended up for me being six. So I was a GA or a graduate assistant for my program. And then I also later earned um, the position to be a site supervisor for the Praxis exam, the exam that teachers have to take across the country. Um, I was the site supervisor for the university. And so I got paid to uh, hire other people and coordinate the administration of the Praxis several times throughout the year. I also, in my third year in the program, was awarded a three-year fellowship through the American Psychological Association's Minority Fellowship Program, uh, which is a grant-funded program through SAMHSA, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration of the federal government. And so it provided a stipend for me to be able to live off of. So for the last three years that I was in grad school, I did not take out any loans related to living expenses and only took out enough to cover the tuition uh, and fees associated with being in the program. So that was a huge help. And even with all of that, I still finished strong with about $214,000 um, worth of debt, uh, which has compounded um, when I finished in 2014. Um, since then has compounded and with additional consumer debt, I am looking at about $267,000 of debt, which is ridiculous. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. I'm not panicking. You're panicking. Okay. So what's the plan, right? What's the plan? So I want to say, I'd love to say that I have this grand thought out, super intricate, detailed plan, but we are really like rolling with the punches because I am in panic mode right now. <laughs> Pardon me. Okay. And I desire to get out of debt entirely as quickly as possible. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to kind of break down what I owe and I'm going to outline the strategy that I think works best for me right now. That total number that the total number is $267,454 and 12 cents as of today. Um, and so what I'd like to do is be able to break down for you that is credit card debt, that is a auto loan and um, student loan. So I've actually up to date been able to pay off three uh, credit cards, um, which is super exciting. Um, and I have just those last two pieces of consumer debt before I'm able to really fully focus on uh, my student loans so i'll break it down so you can see what it looks like and i'll uh, share with you what my plan of attack is going to be like all right so this is where we'll be kind of just talking through what is left over in terms of current debts now i was uh tracking both my sinking funds and um current debts here uh probably at the start of the pandemic in 2020 but I have since moved to a different system. So you can even see here, um, I had a car repair and this is right before uh, I realized I'm gonna have to get a new car. Uh, so this was kind of a, a bill that I had that I was paying on. Um, I also had a Citibank balance, I had an American Express balance. And so I'll do, um, I can do a more detailed video if you'd be interested in kind of how I approach those. But like I mentioned, I have one credit card left and then I do have a new car loan that I had to get in for the car that I had to get in November. 
and then I'll be focusing on my student loans. And so um, this was kind of how I was tracking the debt when it was due, uh, where I started, um, the amount that I was paying, the interest on the debt so I would know whether I was snowballing it or approaching it with the avalanche method and then monthly based on the payments that I made where we were ending. So what I'm going to do, as you can see, I fell off. Um, but what we are going to do is we essentially are going to start that notation over. So let's say because we're talking about payments that are going to be made in July 2021. That's where I'll start. Make sure I'm in frame. Okay. So like I mentioned, there's one card left. There is the Bank of America. And my standard payments to Bank of America had been 484, which is what I was snowballing. Um, that is typically due on the third. Uh, the balance right now to be paid is 460. 46 I will be making the full payment and it was at um, an interest rate of 0% um, because I had done a balance transfer uh, from my American Express to pay that off um, and so the whole idea was to get this paid before the 0% interest ran out. And so the balance that will remain will be zero. Let me actually grab a ruler so we can draw some lines here. Couldn't find my ruler, but the straight edge will work. I'll make it work. ink everywhere okay the point is not for it to be pretty but for it to be paid okay so the next is going to be my nissan now i just started uh this one my nissan payment comes out on the 26th of every month the current balance as of today is 18 85 the minimum payment is 357, but I pay 360 um, to make it a round even number. The current interest on that is 5.23%. Um, and so I don't want to do the balance just yet because I tend to make extra payments on the Nissan um, from my other job. But um, so for now, we're going to leave that blank. We'll just kind of do where things currently sit. That ink is not drying. That's rude. All right. And while you saw here that I broke down the AES and Great Lakes loans, I'm not going to do that just yet because I'm not even paying on Great Lakes. I'm taking advantage of the governmental stock right now to pay down my other loans and other debt. Uh, I am still paying on AES, but because of these ridiculous interest rates, as you can see here, um, right now it is not making a significant dent. And so I will not, until I move to focus on my student loans, I won't list them out the way that I did previously. So the grand total for Great Lakes right now sitting pretty not earning any interest now great lakes comes out on the 15th of each month or has historically i was paying 327 a month and that like i said um oh, oh, that's a little balance got excited there all right 
so the current balance on Great Lakes, and it's not accruing interest right now, is 133 539 47 Whew, geez louise. All right, and I typically pay 327 a month. But like I said, right now, um, there's nothing going to that. And the interest actually varies. Um, it varies between, as you may have seen, 6.5. And I think my highest one is like 7.63. Um, but those are currently managed by the federal government. And then AES, which I have been paying on. That comes out on the 13th of every month. That current balance as of today, I checked, is sitting at 114, 9, 10, 34. And I usually pay a month 267. And again, it also varies in terms of the rate. Now, this is actually up almost $1,000 from February because of the interest that's accruing, um, even though I'm making uh, payments. So let's see what we are looking at in terms of total debt. I don't even know that I want a drum roll for this foolishness. All right, but our total is two, 67, 454, 12. All right. So that is what we are tackling. Like I said, this will be paid to on the uh, 3rd of July. Uh, and then we will be snowballing this payment, which is actually um, 484 and we'll be snowballing this Great Lakes payment um, into the Nissan to aggressively attack that and pay that down. Um, and so I will look to calculate when I anticipate having that paid off. Uh, and then we'll be able to tackle the big fish in terms of the student loans. So, so. There you have it, $267,454.12 of debt. And my plan as of today, right now, around how I'm going to eliminate it. Now, I know that by tackling this debt while also still saving for my wants and dreams will give me a sense of peace and accomplishment. And I'm looking forward to sharing that with you all even if that is not the way that you would choose uh, to go about it. If you have enjoyed this content and would like to see more about how psychology can walk and talk and show up in your everyday life, feel free to subscribe, drop us a comment, leave us a message, and we'll see you soon.